beautiful spring day here in southern New England and we are hiking along a mountainous ridge part of the Trap Rock range that runs from northern Massachusetts to southern Connecticut and our goal today is to visit a black rat snake den and if you want to learn first of all if you want to learn a little bit about Trap Rock ridges and the geology I discuss uh, in some detail in a previous video Copperhead Den so please feel free to check that out the link to which is in the description below. The denning area itself is made up of several interconnected talus slides. Now I suspect, because we've had a few mild days in a row, that some of the rat snakes would have left the talus, their hypernaculum, and have migrated up on the ridge top itself. Overall, they spread out through uh, this deciduous, mostly deciduous forest, but initially in the spring, they, most of them come directly up onto the ridge and cross the trail um, that we are hiking on. All right, I can't even believe that I spotted this rat snake. I think all my experience looking for copperheads and those raised leaves, but still, my eyesight is not what it used to be. And I originally spotted this from 20 feet away. So our first rat snake, and one that was well hidden. This beauty my friend Noah found, also coiled in the leaves, was digesting a recent meal. Black rat snake's diet includes rodents, birds, and their eggs. This specimen found right on the trail is going to demonstrate how arboreal these snakes really are. In fact, during the summer black rat snakes spend a significant amount of time high up in the trees, stalking squirrels and birds and raiding their nests. Black rat snakes arboreal behavior also protects them from terrestrial predators. Here is one partway up a tree trunk, and often while up in trees, they usually situate themselves close to an escape hole. Check out this garter snake eating a wood frog right alongside the trail. So that was very successful up on the ridge top. Seven rat snakes. As you can see, we've arrived, we've descended a little bit. We've arrived at the first section of Talus. This is one of the more difficult hikes I get myself involved in, in the Northeast. So hopefully we find a bunch more black rat snakes without breaking any bones. All right, I'm gonna turn this off for now so I don't drop the camera. Ah. <laughs> Thankfully, there's no timber rattlesnakes or copperheads in the area, so I don't have to be too concerned where I place my hands. All right, now I really am, I have to put this away. I feel like I'm drunk on a boat. All right, it's only been a few minutes since I turned the camera off. And Frankie just found this gorgeous specimen. Looks like could be a she. It looks like she climbed down from this tree.
All right, our first rat snake in the talus and our eighth of the day. Good job, Frankie. What would you estimate the length, Frankie? So close to five feet. I think I mentioned that it is a male. And you can tell, uh, especially with cer certain species like rat snakes, it's pretty easy to tell the genders. If Frankie, you want to just show the underside of the tail. I won't go into all the scientific names of the, the scales, but basically the width of the tail stays roughly the same for eight to ten scales back. And the reason that is, is this is the vent, the colichia, um, where they go to the bathroom, how they breathe, etc. Is after the, the colichia is the male's hemipenis. It's called a hemipenis because it's actually two penis ends. But it's actually right here, and this causes this, I don't know if you can see it, but this bulge. So for females, they can lose their tails below the colichia and still survive. But if a male, uh, through predation or whatever, lost his tail here, he would not be able to breed because it would damage and just, or just completely destroy the hemipenis. Enjoy. So we just released him, and this is your classic defense posture, black rat snakes. Rattling its tail too. Many snakes rattle their tail as a defense. Such a posture, of course, makes them look a little bit larger, more, more menacing. I can't tell, there's one or two up there. It's moving. I promise you didn't place it like that. I didn't even have time to film the other one and found four more. Three head. We have already taken off. You alright? The other three were over. There was two here, and then two up here. So Frankie just found one climbing up the ledge. As, as I mentioned earlier, this is. The route they'll take is directly, either directly up the ledge, or pretty much this whole ridge. One broken up ledge. There you are. So this is a female, you can see that the tail tapers more quickly than a male and you can't, there's no distinguishable lump there where a hemipenis would be. So, good work Frankie. Oh yeah. Thankfully it wasn't three fourths the way up. Show the flame off there. Yeah. 
they're, they're everywhere. That's, that's the, uh, the challenge. They're up in the trees, climbing the ledges, in the talus, hiding under leaves. But they are, they are fun snakes to search for. And they reside in some beautiful, although rough, topography. Here is more evidence just how crazy snake people can be to put themselves through such a punishing hike. As previously mentioned, most rat snakes migrate up the ridge shortly after emerging from hibernation, but some, like this five-foot male, was found heading down. A short distance away, here was another snake, presumably choosing to head down the talus. All right, just spotted one up in a tree. Well, I'm gonna try to get closer. Thanks for joining us today. Now I only have a two hour drive home. <laughs> All right. Back on the ridge top, we found our last and largest black rat snake of the day. This enormous female was just over six feet. 